In Eye on America, we travel the length and breadth of the country to look at issues we and our neighbors face and what's being done about them. Tonight, we focus on the push to end all federally funded scientific testing on animals. Jim Axelrod has part one of a CBS News investigation of this multi-billion dollar industry. This remote piece of land off the coast of South Carolina is known as Monkey Island. Off limits to the public, it's home to nearly 4,000 rhesus monkeys. It may look like a hospitable habitat, but make no mistake, this island is no paradise. It's nice to see in the moment, but then you realize what these monkeys are unfortunately going to be destined for. Every year, hundreds of monkeys are transferred from here to laboratories across the country, where federally funded experiments have yielded major breakthroughs for tuberculosis, malaria, and ozempic. But tests can be painful and even fatal. Experiments we've uncovered range from the savage to the stupid. Justin Goodman is with White Coat Waste, a nonprofit seeking to end all federal funding for animal testing and close Monkey Island for good. And we're witnessing a watershed moment right now. We have an administration that's skeptical of spending, skeptical of establishment science. So what's the goal? We are trying to slash and burn as much animal testing funding as possible. When it comes to animal testing, the political deck is being reshuffled. Traditionally left-leaning animal rights groups have new allies. Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Like the conservative Congresswoman Nancy Mace, who represents the district where Monkey Island is located. The Trump administration put out little-noticed guidance this year, recommending a drawdown. Today we announced a dramatic reduction in animal testing at NIH and FDA. Animals don't care who their supporters voted for. They just want to get out of laboratories as soon as possible. In the past nine months, an investigation by CBS News and The Post and Courier have identified several federal grants for animal testing that were cut, totaling more than $28 million. Could animal testing be made obsolete because of the progress of science? That's what we're pushing the administration to do. Unfortunately, we do still need animals and research for the present. Paul Locke oversees the development of alternatives to animal testing at this lab at Johns Hopkins University, like growing human tissue for experiments. Do you believe we still need animal testing? I want to see us get out of the business of using animals and research. The question is when. The answer is not tomorrow. We don't have the luxury of time yeah. to wait. <laughs> Which introduces another set of stakeholders to this debate, those whose futures may rest on the ability to keep the testing going. That story tomorrow night. For Ion America, I'm Jim Axelrod in San Rafael, California. In Eye on America, we look at issues facing the country, and tonight we conclude a two-part investigation into the use of animals for scientific research. Pressure is building to end this multi-billion dollar industry, but with few scientific alternatives, animal testing remains critical to saving human lives. Here again is Jim Axelrod. When dozens of monkeys made a break for it from this research facility in South Carolina last November, Workers are laying traps to catch dozens of monkeys that escaped from a research facility last night. Most people following the story didn't know what the monkeys were running from. But as animals used in government-funded medical testing, they were actually fleeing for their lives. We're excited to work with you, Doge, the administration, and others to continue cutting wasteful spending on animal experiments. But this brewing political fight about the future of animal testing and millions of dollars of funding for animal experiments being cut. Today, we announced a dramatic reduction in animal testing at NIH and FDA. May shape the quality of human lives as well. In San Rafael, California, Justin and Rosalind Porcano's seven-year-old daughter, Leah, has a rare genetic disorder, Usher syndrome type 1B. She was born deaf and without new treatments, she faces even more challenges ahead. If we don't find a treatment, Leah will most likely be legally blind before high school. So she'll be blind and deaf. Yes. And this will happen in the next seven, eight years. Yes. Mm -hmm. When Leah was diagnosed, her parents looked everywhere for a way to help her. 
they found a scientist at the Oregon National Primate Research Center who provided hope through testing with monkeys. I think about like, oh, I'd, rather, I'd rather not be testing in a non-human primate, but what are the options? What's the alternative? Yeah, you can't just stop testing in all animal models right now. It's a crazy concept. The Porcanos feel primate testing is the best bet for now, but they're also placing hope in new technologies being developed in labs like this one at Johns Hopkins University. If the future provided a way to do all the testing in a lab and no animals suffered, would you be in favor? Absolutely. Of course. But as of now? We're not there. We're not there yet. And we don't have the luxury of time. This is kind of my dream. Here in Jack Thornton's lab, they're working on something that sounds like science fiction, organoids. It's an emerging technology. Oh, it's the early days. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're still getting that. Grown from human tissue, organoids are cells from specific organs that could one day make animal testing obsolete. But not yet, says Paul Locke, who oversees the lab. I want to see us get out of the business of using animals in research. The question is when. The answer is not tomorrow. But this little girl may not have time to wait for one day. For Eye on America, I'm Jim Axelrod in San Rafael, California.